Welcome to Concatenating Strings in Python Efficiently. My name is Joseph, and I'll be your instructor for this video course. String concatenation is a fundamental operation that combines multiple strings into a single string. There are a number of different ways to combine and manipulate strings in Python, and you may be surprised to know that they're not all equal. Depending on your use case, the technique you choose can have a significant impact on your code's performance. This course is all about exploring the options available to you for dynamically building strings in a variety of situations through examples. Throughout this course, you'll learn how to use the plus operator to concatenate Python strings, combine collections of strings efficiently using the join method, apply repeated concatenation with the star or asterisk operator, make use of string literal concatenation, and finally, choose when to have the print function do the heavy lifting of concatenation for you. All right, meet me in the next lesson to continue your journey towards concatenation mastery. I promise I'm not just stringing you along. You can use the plus operator to concatenate strings in two different ways. By itself, when used to concatenate strings, plus is known as, you guessed it, the concatenation operator. This operator takes two string operands and concatenates them, creating a single combined string. Now, if you add an equal sign, plus equal is known as the augmented concatenation operator. This operator is used to append a string to an existing string. But it's important to note that string operations like the augmented concatenation operator are not performing true mutations on strings because strings are immutable objects. Instead, they create new string objects linked to the original variable name. Now let's go to the REPL for some examples. First, let's see an example of the concatenation operator applied to string literals. Write the following line of code. The string, hey, comma space, followed by the plus operator, followed by the string, pythonista. The result is the two strings combined into one. Hey, pythonista. You can concatenate variables that hold strings in the same fashion. First, create the variable head. In it, store the string, string concatenation, with an extra space at the end. Next, create the variable tail. In it, store the string, is fun in Python, exclamation mark. Now you can check the result, head plus tail. The output is the complete string, string concatenation is fun in Python. Note the extra space at the end of the first string. The plus operator isn't going to add spaces for you, so you need to remember that yourself. When using variables, you may want to use the augmented concatenation operator to repeatedly extend a string. To see this, start by creating the variable word and store within it the letters py. Now let's use the augmented concatenation operator to extend this into a full word. Word plus equals the string tho. Word plus equals the string nis. Word plus equals the string ta. Now view the contents of word. It's the complete string, hyphenista. What's important to remember though, is that both operators can only concatenate strings with other strings. If, for example, you try to concatenate an integer with a string, like combining the string the answer is with the integer 42, you'll encounter a type error explaining what went wrong. Can only concatenate string, not int, to string. To get around this, you'll need to cast the non-string operand to a string using the built-in stir function. Input the following line of code. The string, the answer is, plus calling the stir function and passing in the integer 42. The result is the concatenated string, the answer is 42. What you've used here are pretty much the most basic forms of string concatenation, and they're super useful when you're only dealing with a few strings. However, because Python strings are immutable objects, they cannot truly be modified in place. Even with augmented concatenation, Python must create a new string object for every concatenation operation. This leads to extra overhead in terms of both memory and computation, and this only gets worse the more strings you wish to combine. So what's the alternative? That's exactly what the next lesson is about, where we introduce the join method of the string class. Applying concatenation efficiently with the join method. The join method is a string method, meaning it must be called off of an existing string. It concatenates multiple strings together using a separator, building one new string object. Under the hood, this is done efficiently 
without requiring the creation of intermediate string objects during the concatenation process. Remember, strings are immutable, so this is a huge benefit when compared to the overhead encountered using multiple plus or plus equal operators for the same task. Now, as input, the join method takes an iterable of strings. As long as the contents are all strings, this can be any type that supports iteration, such as lists or tuples. Because the join method is called on an existing string, that then becomes the separator of the concatenated output. Now, I invite you to join me in the REPL. First, you'll need some strings to work with. So create a list of strings and call it uh, strings. Strings is a list of strings, each one a single word. Hello world, I am a Pythonista. To use the join operator, now you need an existing string. This can be a string literal, so start by creating a literal string with a single space. Quote, space, quote and call join passing in the list you created before, strings, dot join strings. The output, a single combined string. Hello world, I am a Pythonista. By joining on a single space, each string in the original list is joined together separated by a space. Not only is this efficient, it's also super clean and readable. However, just like with the concatenation operator, you can still only join strings together with this method. To test this, create a list of integers from 1 to 5 and call it uh, numbers. And for the separator this time, let's use a semicolon and a space. Quote, semicolon, space, quote, dot join numbers. And the result is a type error. Sequence item 0, expected string instance, int found. What does this mean? From the very first element encountered by the join method, we get an error because the join method is only designed to work on strings. The way we can fix this is again by casting each number to a string before passing them to the join method. Quote, colon, space, quote, dot join, and then pass a generator expression to the join method. If you're new to generator expressions, don't worry, I'll walk you through the code. They're a useful technique to have in your toolkit, and this is a great use case. And if you've ever used list comprehensions before, the syntax will also be very familiar str number for number in numbers. The output is our original list of numbers as one string, each separated by a semicolon and a space. And while you could use a list comprehension here, a generator expression is more efficient because the numbers cast to string are fed to the join method one at a time. At a large scale, this would also make a huge difference in the performance of your program. Next, let's go back to discussing operators and see how you can apply the star operator to strings.